Uh, thank you, Uma, for your kind introduction. A very good morning to all of you joining us for this year's Ross Eye in Asia Pacific Workshop. My name is Jin Yang, and it is my pleasure to be invited here today by the organizer, the Ross Industrial Team, to speak on the, on the topic of robotics middleware framework. In my current role, I work in partnership with the facilities management team to explore how automation and robotic solutions could augment current operations. I also have a very keen interest in how the use of robotics is going to change my children's work when they enter the workforce uh, sometime in the near future. So moving on to the next uh, slides. Right, so this is just a quick outline. Uh, the next slide as well. So in recent times, uh, the trend I have observed has been towards an increasing number of organizations looking towards uh, implementing robotic solutions. This extends beyond the factory floor and the warehouses where they have traditionally been found to areas such as shopping centers, hotels, and even large convention centers where humans and robots will have to coexist in close proximity. The driving force behind this, as I think all of us can imagine, can largely be attributed to cost, both cost and efficiency reasons. Next slide. In Singapore, robots have already begun to be part of our everyday lives so, for example, at uh, Tampines Regional Library, robots already assist their human librarian counterparts in scanning shelves for misplaced books in the form of a shelf reading robot. I understand they actually do this uh, at night when the humans are away, and actually uh, the humans come in the next day and actually uh, have much less work to do as compared to them manually doing this uh, those tasks. Imagine there's also another robot that also um, collects the books once they're done in the form of a mobile book, uh, book drop. And that's really pretty interesting. With the, the current proliferation of online food delivery services, all in fierce competition with each other, it's also not surprising that some of our uh, key or leading uh, online platforms have begun trawling food collection and food delivery services all around the island. And there are actually any, many other examples that are highlighted in the news in recent months. Based on the numbers released by the government department of stats, this country faces the likelihood of an increasingly aging workforce in the not too distant future. Did you know that the old age support ratio, which is defined as the number of people who are capable of providing economic support to the number of older people in the society, uh, and these people who may be dependent on other support has been declining from 13.5 in 1970s to just 4.2, 4 4.3 in 2020. So I suspect that this trend won't reverse in the years ahead as well. At the national level, there's also impetus to consider how we can upskill and augment the abilities of our workforce to deal with this eventuality. And there, I believe robotics has a very big part to play as well. Next slide. In Areas where robots have been successfully integrated into existing work processes, the benefits reaped have been substantial and very obvious. The, autom the automation of manufacturing has transformed the production uh, processes of factories around the world. And closer to home, at Changi Airport, uh, we have also saved many man hours after implementing more than 20, almost 30 different robots, uh, cleaning robots across our four terminals. They are busy at work helping, uh, working in close partnership with our human uh, cleaners to clean the terminals. And uh, if you don't really realize, actually, there are quite a number of robots uh, in the airport today, and they provide a variety of tasks from providing refreshments at Jewel and also helping with traffic enforcement at the curbside of our terminals. Yet, despite the advantages that the successful implementation of robotics can bring to an organization, there are also various considerations need, that need to be taken into account before robotics will be widely adopted. On the business side, I'm sure most, if not all of you, would have at one point or another had to grapple with considerations of cost and ROI. Putting forth a viable business model is integral to any team wanting to convince their senior management that robotics is the way to go. The ROI of onboarding a robot to perform only specific tasks could be extensively long and may not, at least from a financial uh, perspective or standpoint, be as efficient as actually hiring a human worker. Instead, as, actually, as the humans can actually perf uh, easily perform a variety of tasks, the question 
to ask then is, could processes be redesigned such that the use of robotics are optimized in how they are deployed? Would the use of operational data perhaps also optimize how we actually use these robots in the world? Uh, and in addition, there are also operation constraints. So come, some common issues I've uh, personally come across is uh, limited battery life, uh, time needed for charging, and also uh, the utility. Also, obviously, the utility of some of these robots we have outside the factory floor, and most of them are typically designed for just one use. So, for example, today we could easily get a human cleaner to vacuum, mop, and then clear the trash bin. However, if I need to turn to a robot solution, I will probably need, probably need three uh, robots uh, to complete the same set of tasks. Many robotic solutions also require quite a bit of hand holding by humans. For example, to move them to the start point to clean, to pick them up after they are finished cleaning to clear the water, and also then remember to charge them before they can actually come back and do the work the next day. To those of us who are familiar with the state of robotics today, the need for human intervention is prevalent, especially outside the factory floor. But as my wife keeps asking me, why am I tasked to try and onboard robots when at the end of the day, we still require humans to help them? So isn't it uh, strange that apart from helping robots do the work, we will also have to go and uh, help them uh, in, the, in the staff as well. So what is intuitive desire is a seamless process where robots are relatively independent in between the assigned tasks. Uh, many of us here today have a passion for the robotics industry, and we want to see the number of robots used in future grow. In the area of facilities management at least, I feel there are two challenges in particular that need to be addressed for this to become a reality. Turning to the first one, in my exploration of robotics, I've come across multiple vendors with excellent products. Excellent in the sense that they are able to efficiently carry out what they've been designed to do. However, beyond the initial pilot stage, many of these products may stumble at the integration stage because they are both effort and cost inherent in deploying the solution such that it integrates well with the operational flow of the business. So let me give you one example. Imagine purchasing a set of robots that can help me clean my facility. However, if my facility comprises of multiple floors, do I purchase one robot for the different floors? Do I purchase one robot to clean the floor and another transport the robot to different floors? Or wouldn't it be easier just to get a human to bring the robot assistant to different floors for their work? Of course, then this requires uh, humans to actually do a bit more work as well. What if there is a scenario that we are made aware that a new task is urgently required? Wouldn't it be great that I can have oversight on where all my robots are at any point in time, regardless of which manufacturer or which robot type it is? Uh, perhaps my sentry robot noticed a spill and then requested for my cleaning robot to come over and mop it up. It sounds very similar to how our human uh, workforce operates, doesn't it? Having a single, single platform that allows for different types of robots to be onboarded, to be able to interact with one another and the building systems would definitely be welcome indeed. The second challenge I would like to talk about is task management. So if one has selected a good a uh, robot solution, the robot typic chosen typically performs the task quite well. The headache comes, however, when the user wants to stack tasks on, for, for multiple reports, uh, robots together. At that point, human intervention is, quiet, uh, is then required to actually uh, micromanage the transition between task 1, task 2 by each robot. In that sense, the industry is still uh, moving towards creating a, a seamless robotic experience especially when robots or different vendors are involved. What can we then do about these challenges? Obviously, there is no silver bullet today. I, however, would like to explore uh, how the robotics middleware framework or RMF might be a suitable solution to address these challenges. I guess for those who may not be familiar, RMF for this was developed to be on top, was, was developed on top of ROS and comprises a collection of reusable, scalable libraries and tools. Its goals are to enable interoperability of heterogeneous fleets of any type of robo robotic systems. So RMF utilizes standard communication protocols to connect with infrastructure and automates how robots are deployed to optimize the use of resources. It can also add intelligence to the system through resource allocation and by preventing conflicts uh, over shared resources through the RMF core. So in short, the purpose of RMF, as how I view it, is to enable different fleets of robots to work seamlessly together. This would lower the barrier to using different fleets of robots 
from different manufacturers. And that is something that as an end user would be actually pretty interesting. RMF already, as I understand, has a task integration module built in libraries and work is also ongoing to in incorporate other features such as task planning, task management, battery management, uh, which would potentially be, be really useful in uh, fleet management. In addition, uh, RMF also allows us to do um, testing and simulation before this is done in real life. And this uh, allows us to save time and allows us to really think through scenarios before we actually deploy them uh, in the real world. In the area of facilities management, where cost is always an issue, these advantages are not inconsiderable. But as some of you may ask, if a company is already doing well, uh, selling robots, what incentive is there for them to lower the barriers of entry by making it easier for the end user to mix and match robots from multiple vendors? I would like to suggest that first in, uh, in other areas, the open source model has proven to be beneficial for crowdsourcing solutions and learning from uh, multiple parties. Uh, from marketing agencies gathering consumer, consumer insights through focus group sessions and social media posts, to F&B companies uh, taking in user submission for new product flavors, we can see how useful this crowdsourcing sort of model actually works for them. And there is no reason why the same shouldn't be uh, for, the, for in the case of robotics, especially at this point in uh, this journey. So while it may not seem initially, uh, it may, while it may seem initially counterintuitive, contributing knowledge has the potential to enlarge the pie for everybody by enabling speedy adoption of robotics by new users, especially those who are starting out on this journey and may not be really familiar and also wants to gain the benefits of uh, the use of robotics without having to invest so much in the infrastructure. Second, if the robotics industry actually continues expanding, playing nicely together likely would be become an inevitability anyway. Today, no single company has a monopoly on robot production. There are many good vendors in the market and many more startups who are emerging, who are eager to come out and show off the latest and greatest. And I think this is a very good, uh, good, uh, good thing to have. Users uh, would naturally want to pick and choose solutions from amongst them. And if a user wants to operate robots at enterprise scale, interoperability or the lack of it will then become a significant cost factor and a decision point. Uh, so any vendor who's able to offer robotic solutions that can coexist with existing ones would then have a large advantage over a competitor who cannot offer the same. Of course, the topic of security will then be an issue that will have to be worked out at some point in time. Understand that at least for ROS2, there's a lot of security already built into it and that's great. Uh, so, but there are some questions like, for example, how much control should a central system have on the different robotic vendors? How would uh, and from a more uh, practical skill, how would we assign liability should something happen as part of the operations? This is even more so when we have robots assisting with humans in an unregulated environment outside the factory floor. Nonetheless, the idea of RMF is already gaining a foothold in Singapore. The first applications are already taking place in the context of healthcare. So Changi General Hospital's Chart Lab is partnering with Open Robotics in developing the standardized uh, robotics middleware framework for healthcare, so known as Romi H, that this would accelerate robotics development and adoption in the healthcare sector. Here at Changi Airport, we are in the midst of a collaboration with Open Robotics and Ross I, with the aim of uh, understanding how RMF could potentially help us with uh, how we run some of the operations where robots are involved, as, uh, especially in future when we believe the number of robots actually scale uh, exponentially. When this is done, hopefully we will also be able to share some of our learnings. The saying that the whole is greater than the parts is actually apt in the development field of robotics. Collaboration, we feel, is a must to accelerate the, the, this development. And more, impo more importantly, their successful integration into the live operational environment is in, in areas that, such as uh, facilities management is really crucial. So in conclusion, I would like to encourage all of us here to explore uh, participating in this or, and also in such trials to contribute to this uh, architecture of RMF. And with that, I hope that this uh, field will actually grow bigger and uh, help us more in future.